Okay, hello and welcome to another video by Adrian David from Pure Electric. I'm just quickly doing this video because I get a lot of people asking me about the routes into the industry and not everyone can get an apprenticeship. Um, some, a lot of people have to work around their existing commitments. They can't afford to take a pay cut in the first year. Um, and some employers don't even realise that there are grants out there available. Um, you know, three to four thousand pounds available to um, as an incentive to take on apprentice. But um, you know, I'm going to quickly do this video about the self-funded group, which is the two, three, six, five levels two and three um, qualification that's available. So one of the things that I'm just going to talk, quickly talk you through is this website that's been put together by Electrical Careers, which is the TESP. So. Um, TESP, which is down here. And it talks about doing the right training. So it says the right training takes time. There are no shortcuts to becoming a qualified electrician. Uh, they say that four years is the usual period of time to be involved. You do get some commercial training providers. They offer intensive packages when knowledge courses are condensed. I recently did a video with uh, Neil Phillips as a training company based in Cambridgeshire called Electrical Courses UK. And he teaches primarily um, adults, so adult courses, and he does block weeks. So eight weeks, level two, and I think it was a two week gap or something. And then there was eight weeks, level three. So 16 weeks all in all. Um, and that was about six thousand okay? pounds, which you know is about the going rate, um, which but usually is spread over two years. Now. One of the problems that I can foresee with that, and this is just my personal opinion, just from what I've witnessed, and you know, I've only been training for two years, so please don't take this as gospel. Neil says that he gets a good um, level from these guys because they're there every day. So Monday they're there, Tuesday they turn up, they've already done a bit Monday, so they're already, their head's in the game. And same with Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And we liken to that to being on a job. You know, you start a job, and if it's a five day job, you're doing it consecutively, then when you turn up in the morning, you know exactly what you've got to do the next day. And it does help the, the job speed up. Um, so I, I, it's a very valid point. Um, rather than doing it a five day job over five weeks where you turn up on the first day and then you forget most of it by the time you get back again. Okay, so it's a very valid point. My take on it though is that because you're getting all that information in such a short space of time, the memory retention isn't brilliant in, in, in my opinion. And I, I guess, you know, I can't, I can't talk about Neil's experience because that's Neil's experience. I, all I can do is talk about my experience with the apprentices that we have, and we have them over three years. And these guys, some of them are adults as well. You know, our oldest apprentice is in his 60s um, and he struggles to retain the level of knowledge not because of his age and his ability, because he's one of the top guys in the class. He really wants it. He's really focused. It's just remembering everything that needs to be remembered, practicing it out in the field and retaining that knowledge and then practicing it over and over again. So over three years, that makes it easier because you're on the job four days a week. You're at college one day a week. And then that enables the memory retention. So there's pros and arguments for it, and there's a different opinion. You know, nobody's opinion is right. It's whatever works for the, uh, the individual. It's just something to think about. And, you know, the TESP are saying the same thing effectively. They're saying, look, you know, we strongly recommend caution. Um, make sure that you have time to properly embed the learning. And most importantly, remember that knowledge only takes you part of the way. Okay, So, again, you need to be on the tools to learn the job. Whereas if you're doing, a, you know, uh, just a, this diploma route, a self-funded route, which is what I'm going to talk through, you're probably training around your existing job or existing commitments. So you're not really on the tools. So you may have a good theory base, but you haven't got the practical skills. So then I'm going to look at this, oh, not this one. Then I'm going to look at the training routes provided. Now, if I scroll down to England and we look at the self-funded route, we can then click on um, take a look at the self-funded journey. And then this brings up the self-funded journey. So basically, before you start, you, you don't need much in the way of qualifications, really, um, and consider whether this is the route that you want to follow. Now, 
money wise, you're probably looking somewhere between six thousand to eight thousand uh, pounds. If you take Neil's course at six thousand, it'd be over sixteen weeks, but that's block weeks, so five days a week for eight weeks, uh, which again may not be possible over your existing um, job. I don't, I can't remember whether he does evening courses, or you you can get it over two years, sort of one day a week or a couple of days a week. Or you can do what I did, and I did it in the evenings, two evenings a week. So I did a Tuesday evening, uh, six till nine, and Thursday evening, six till nine. And that, that's quite tough as well. You know, that has its pros. Obviously, you can still train. But the negative of that is, I promise you, at six o'clock, you're flagging a bit. Come eight o'clock, you're flagging a lot. And by nine o'clock, you just want to go home uh, and have your dinner or something or, you know, just get home and get the kids to bed or whatever. And it is it is hard work, you know, but again, anything that you want in life is going to be hard. So you do the level two and you do the level three. Now, at this point, it says here that if you gain employment during your studies, you can then apply to go on an apprenticeship because the qualification framework is the same as the apprenticeship. Okay, follows the same pattern. So, again, one of the downsides to having an apprenticeship is that you have to take a pay cut. You know, the, the minimum wage for a first year apprentice is £4.15 an hour, um, although employers do get an incentive of £3,000 to £4,000 to take people on. Okay, and that, that incentive is there. So, Again, a lot of employers don't know about this incentive, so it's worth bringing it up in conversation. Also, don't forget that with an apprenticeship, the £4.15 an hour is the minimum wage they're allowed to offer you. You can negotiate for a higher wage depending on your skill set. So it is open to negotiation. You could also ask, you know, in three months' time, can we take another look at this you know, and reassess the situation after you've tried me out for a bit? So it's always worth, you know, opening up that dialogue with, you, with a few prospective employer. Now, if the thought of dropping down to £4.15 an hour or somewhere around that for your first year doesn't uh, appeal to you, um, um, and you possibly not if you've got mortgage or kids or family or whatever, uh, financial commitments, what this is suggesting is that you could do the level two over your first year. Then what you could do is you could, in your second year, rather than going on to the level three, two, three, six, five, if you had a job, so over that course of the year, if you were applying to employers, applying to, uh, applying to employers to try and get an apprenticeship, at the end of that first year, you're no longer a first year apprentice. Now, the downside of that is that you no longer qualify for the funding. I'm not sure how that would work um, because obviously you've already had some training might be possible to still get the funding i'm not sure you'd have to talk to the college and see what they say but if you are entitled to the funding that enables you to then skip the first year and maybe go straight into the second year again i don't know how that works with the funding it's something that we're going to look into but you could skip the first year and then go straight into the second year at which point you then get minimum wage for whichever age band that you're in so if i type up here Apprentice wages, gov. That will take me to the government website. And so national minimum wage for 16 to 18 year olds is £4.30 an hour. If you're over 19, it's £4.30 an hour. Um, 19 or over in your first year, sorry, it's £4.30 an hour. And then you'll go up to the minimum wage, which will be. Uh, this is the cal calculator. We don't want to start the calculator. There you go. So this then takes us to the national national minimum wage and national living wage rates. OK. So from April 2021, if you're 23 and over, you're entitled to £8.91 an hour in the second year. If you're 21 to 22, it's £8.36. 18 to 20, £6.56. And if you're under 18, it's £4.62. And there's the apprentice wage at £4.30. But one of the benefits of being an apprentice is that you're training. 
at the same time. So you're doing at least 20% of your normal working hours must be spent on training. And all your training is paid for you as an apprentice. Um, the MVQs pay for you. You should still get holiday pay plus bank holidays. You know, there are some benefits to, to being an apprentice. Not to mention, obviously, the fact that you're on the tools four days a week, which I, I promise you is, is invaluable. And, you know, you have to be realistic. Uh, in your first year, you'll be quite useless, to be honest with you. I mean, within the first three months, unless you've got any previous experience, you, you won't know a lot. You'll be a bit of a drain on the, on the finances, to be honest with you. You know, I've been there. We've all been there. Um, after three months, I was kind of rewiring houses by myself, but I didn't know what I was doing. I could see mon I could do monkey see, monkey do. And, and if there was a difference in the routine, then that threw me. Uh, and I didn't really understand what I was doing and why I was doing it, but I could repetition, repetition, uh, no problem. Uh, and it does take about 10 years to get your knowledge truly grounded, you know, really understand what you're doing. Um, and that's if you really try hard and keep pushing with CPD, which is continuing professional development. Anyway, back to this route here. If you do the diploma route, so this is the self-funding route, the diploma route, once you finish the level two and the level three, you then apply for a job. And the problem you then have is an employer might not want to take you on because all of your classwork, your, your experience is classroom based, which is in ideal conditions. You still don't, unless you come from another trade or something like that, you still don't understand how buildings go together, you know, problem, how to get over any problems. Um, so effectively, you're starting from scratch with an employer uh, and they will take that into consideration. So they may not want to employ you because they, they might as well take on a first year apprentice and get the three to four thousand pounds funding. Um, again, a lot of employers don't want to take on 16, 17, 18 year olds because they're not there for the right reasons. You know, they're not as committed as somebody that's older. So you just need to find the right employer. There are good employers out there. There are the right employers out there. They're just hard to find. So again, you just need to be looking from day one, in my opinion. However, if you've already done the level two and managed to find a job um, before going into level three or even on the level three, then you go straight into an apprenticeship and you haven't got that, that issue. So this is something that you guys need to look at and need to think about. So again, with the diploma route, you finish the level two, the level three, you've got no experience on site, you need to get a job at that point to then start getting experience and then to start building what they call the workplace portfolio or the workplace logbook, um, which is essentially you documenting your time at work. Um, and after about 12 months to 18 months, possibly maybe even two years, that will be completed. And then you need to pay an assessor about 1,000 pounds, 1,200 pounds to 1,700 pounds to, to sort out the MVQ for you and check it off. And then at which time you'll go into the AM2, which is the endpoint assessment. And that's just a simple installation that any apprentice should be able to pass if they've got the level of skill and knowledge required. And it is, it is a simple test if you know what you're doing. It really is a good level for uh, a three year, third year apprentice. And once you pass that, you're then qualified as an electrician. Now that is the, the diploma route, okay? There's options there. The downfalls are that you're, you might struggle to get a job and you have to pay out of your pocket at first if you don't manage to get a job in that time. And that, like I said, that'd be six to eight thousand pounds. Plus as well then, so let's say the course is over two years traditionally. You've then got to find a job and it's going to take you another two years to do the workplace logbook. So four years in total um, and then qualified electrician after that if all runs smoothly. Now, a lot of people struggle to get the job. I'm not gonna to lie to you. Uh, I get so many people say they've done this course and no one will take them on. So you need to start looking for a job straight away. You need to be prepared to fall into that trap, okay? And also, like I said, all the time you're looking, try and keep trying to find an apprenticeship, okay? Because if you can get onto that, then that answers all your problems, okay? Um, as long as you can obviously take the pay drop. Now, other than that, um, Neil Phillips from Electrical Courses UK was also suggesting that some people get jobs as electrical improvers with the, you know, on JIB rates for about 16 pounds an hour. 
when you're still at sort of level two, level three level. Um, I, I haven't heard of anyone that's managed to do that in, you know, and, and that's not extensive. Okay, I haven't really looked for it, but from, from the people that I've spoken to, they haven't got that. It's not to say that these jobs are around, you just need to find them. Another way that people get the experience is to work for agencies, to get, to get agency work. And my experience of working for an agency was horrible. Um, there's no job security. You'll literally turn up, told what to do, you go home, and it is soul destroying. I found it, I hated it, absolutely hated it. And most of the people that I speak to that have done agency work hate it as well. But it's a means to an end, and it will enable you to fill out your portfolio. Okay. Um, but nobody's got any commitment to you. That's, that's the downside. Um, you're literally you, you could just turn up for a day and do a day's work and go home again it could be three months work six months work and you might be lucky and then get employment that way um, it all depends on who you are and I like to think that if you've got the right attitude the right drive the right demeanor and you look like you walk with purpose and you do everything to the best of your ability an employer is going to want to take somebody on like that because I can tell you from an employer's point of view having employed people before Finding employees is massively difficult. Okay, finding people that care about the work as much as you do, especially when it's your name that's on the, the vans. So again, if you've got that personality, you've got that demeanour, you know, you could and you stand out. Then again, hopefully, fingers crossed, you shouldn't find any trouble getting a job either, because people will notice you. They'll, you'll stand out. Okay, if you've got any questions about this video, if there's any other advice that I can help you help you with then please get in touch um, i'm going to do the am2e route and talk through that and the apprenticeship route and tell you the pros and cons of each one and then hopefully you guys can make informed decisions um, but other than that take care of yourselves and i'll speak to you soon